through kindergarten and preschool, I, I discovered very early that my favorite activity was painting, and possibly because I didn't speak English so well, I set myself aside. And while other kids were carrying on and reading and other things, I was painting. I was also totally influenced by the Mexican muralists. Um, although they didn't, they were not the reason that I became a mural painter. I, I, I came to muralism through graffiti, through the street writing. You just got to remember where I came from. I think graffiti is beautiful. Yeah, I came from Watts and from Pacoima. I came from L.A. and I'm an athlete. I come out of. A <coughs> I would. Um, I absolutely <coughs> am a feminist, and I'm absolutely a Chicana. Okay, and I, uh, I just did a piece called Absolutely Chicana. <laughs> because my younger compañeras, uh, young artists are saying, they're doing shows called Vaguely Chicana, you know, um, sort of, you know, phantom sightings, silliness about not owning their identity. Yeah, I was actually reading about you on your artist website. And um, in your statement, you wrote, I'm beginning to believe I'm a political landscape painter. I have always known the value of art as a tool for transformation, both personal and political. What I have had to learn through being attentive to my own curiosities and artistic focus is that I choose often to use land as my method of recording memories and stories in my paintings and murals. And I wanted to ask you um, what, what's so significant about using land for you? Well, I think it has to come, it, it comes from um, a concept that is really common to many, many cultures in which people believe that memory is embedded in place. And that if you really want to understand a particular historical event, you have to go to where it happened. And by going to where it happens, you have some kind of insight uh, about that particular moment in time. So for example, you would go to the fields of Gettysburg to understand that particular battle. And what's really interesting about it is that it doesn't matter which culture you're from or where you're from, you have uh, a kind of common belief. And for me, I think it comes from being raised, raised by um, a woman who was an indigenous woman, uh, a, mestasi, a, a mestiza from um, Chihuahua, um, a healer, and a woman who actually had a relationship to the land that was very deep the notion that the earth is female oh, okay. and that the that mother earth that, that the that we are um, in a sense we are guardians of the land and that we um, that we have a special relationship to the earth and its cycles of the sun and the moon and that um, on a spiritual level I women I think women are more equipped to be less destructive it's not saying that we are less destructive and that we are all enlightened, but that we have the potential to be. That we are not Equipped inherently together. destroyers because we're life givers. And as a result of that, and because of that, we can connect more to the living organism of the earth. The girls restored. There's four of them. You can, you can see three of them. Uh, yeah, so I spent two years working with the farm workers in the fields. And uh, as a result of it, this is the, this is the story they told me. Mm -hmm. And these are from Bienvenidos means, you know, welcome okay. to your trip north on the rails to get to work in the fields. Vivienda, this is your accommodations. It's kind of a joke, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> farm workers laugh when they see this. Mm -hmm. El sueldo, your great wages, which are pennies and sharecropping for strawberries. And uh, Ladlina Pelagrosa, which, hey, this isn't pesticides, it's dangerous fog. The Lord de la Espalda is um, pain in the back, grapes. Ayuda extranjera is um, foreign aid, sending your check home to your families. Yeah. And then here, you, you can sneak in there, and you can see the Guadalupe Angel. Those are the founders. You can 
then there's another one on the other side. Yeah, I'll leave it turn around. It's a pain. It's a pain. <laughs> this is the dream of our future country. by the people of Guadalupe, what they wanted health care, mm -hmm. fresh water, the children out of the fields, mm -hmm. decent housing. A lot of people live in these pig pens and, and makeshift caves as they come to harvest. <coughs> in total poverty. They can't even eat the fruits that they, and vegetables they pick. And these are, this is a Swiss Italian angel from the graveyard. Because one wave of immigrants came after the other. And uh, there was a the marble carver who made these amazing statuaries for their graveyard. And so we brought one of them to life and in the wings put this, the, what the people wished for. Yes, you can. This is like, you know, is is work. Obama borrowed that that statement. And Dolores, uh, I was at a uh, reception this last week for Jesus Trevino, who's one of the great Chicano filmmakers of, of my era, and uh, at the Directors Guild, which was wonderful to see him get um, recognition. Um, he was among the very earliest to say, if we don't document it, it doesn't exist. And his Judy Chicago told me, who was like one of the wisest women I know, that, um, that I really needed to care about history and, and about my own history. And I did, you know, pay attention to her because as a result of that I did make, I started to do with my archives and things like that. And I really see the value of it now for young people. And, um, I'm fortunate that we did do that. We're fortunate that I had some wonderful children, my children, um, I'm talking about children, um, two PhD candidates who, who developed the archive, which has been just a modern, a, amazing resource for people and for me and for the institution. But um, I guess I think, I guess again, I really think that the best teaching is example. And that I can say whatever I want. I could try to control history and, you know, work on writing my own biography, which they're trying to get me to do now. I'm finding that really difficult to do. Um, not because I don't want to write about it, but because I think the biography is so much less significant than speaking about, for example, the Great Wall, and what was the process I used, and how did I interact with the kids? What was, what made it the magic that it was? I mean, if I could get to the alchemy of that particular thing, I actually feel like. I'm pretty blessed. I'm, I'm getting to work on things that are lifelong hopes. And with the to people. To be able to make these kinds of monuments, to remember the people I want to remember. <laughs> what do you want the world to remember about you? I think that's such a funny question. Really. I mean, as if we could decide, right? I mean, we're, such, we're all temporary residents of the earth, you know. We just pass through this space in just for a minute. I mean, doorknobs last longer than us. <laughs>